This is a virtual trip to Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, taken through a vintage postcard and an actual three-day visit made in June 2003. I currently reside in Australia, but in a five-month trip in 2003, I stayed with friends in Napanee, Ontario, and drove up to Sudbury. With a lovely drive north, the famous Sudbury Water Tower welcomed us. This map shows the location of Sudbury on Ramsey Lake. You can see the city is spread out uh, along a highway running from the southwest to the northeast. My traveling companion is Richard to the right, and my name's Don to the left. We caught up with friends Richard. In the background, Christina. The older woman is Janina Wolf, a friend of Richard's Polish mother. Now let's take a look at some of the vintage history. Sudbury was started uh, about 1885 with the construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway and the discovery of nickel war. It rapidly led to a wealthy city as reflected in the public buildings. Here's the post office. An early high school. An early Sudbury primary school. And city buildings. Not many wooden buildings. Buildings were built to that. No cars in this one. Just a horse and wagon. Let's a look at a few downtown postcards. The prosperity of the town was based on mining. Here we have the Creighton Mine, owned by International Nickel of Sudbury. Another large mine was the Rhodes Mine. A better view of the head frame. The Garson Mine. Ramsey Lake is quite a large lake located on the outskirts of Sudbury. Here's some early postcards. It looks very attractive. From these postcards, one wouldn't know about the devastation caused by the center plant of International Nickel. Bell Park is located near Ramsey Lake. The Big Nickel is the symbol of Sudbury. Here shot about 1950. At that time they had a few other coins as well. Here a big one cent piece. The prosperity of Sudbury was based on mining, shown in this sculpture. It's extremely hard toil. A wonderful sculpture capturing Sudbury. The small chimneys and the large buildings symbolize the mining. Well, let's go and visit Inco. Copper mining began in 1883. During the 1890s, uh, the chemistry was developed to process nickel, uh, steel alloys, and the Creighton mine was opened in 1900 to become the largest nickel mine in the world.
Shinto has a good website. It employs over four and a half thousand people. And it's one of the largest melting and refining complex in the world. This satellite photograph shows the large smokestack. The shadow indicates its real height. Inco head frames. Here are the postcards of the smelter show very much shorter smokestack. A lovely shot showing the moon and then panning down to show the chimney. Sunset in Sudbury. The smelting plant today. This postcard shows the current height of the chimney. Just about as high as the Empire State Building. Not quite as high as the old twin towers, but certainly over twice as high as the old chimney. And there the postcard is smelting. There's still substantial pollution even today, in spite of the re-greening of Sudbury, which has had tremendous success. These Canadian nickels were selling for $10 on eBay, 1951. And here's the same nickel, except much larger. A view of the town of Sudbury from the big nickel. A rather nice playground for the children. We head inside to visit Dynamic Earth. It took a good part of half a day and was tremendously fun and educational. The people were friendly and very good at explaining the development of Sudbury. It's well worth the money that it costs to get in. An interpretive center outlines the beginning of Sudbury, product of a large meteor crash this year. In the picture, you can see the gigantic crater. We look out on the refinery and the large chimney, explained by the big poster below. We learned about the construction of the railway and the discovery of copper sulfide on the railway right away on the rim of the Sudbury Basin. This current map of the Canadian Pacific Railway shows the location of Sudbury, about 400 kilometers directly north of Toronto at the union of the two railways. This old CPR station shows the investment the company placed in Sudbury. A 1950s postcard of the CPR. Sudbury is rich in ore. We go to watch a display. It's called Nickel City Stories. And it's interesting because it has Louie in a barber shop setting telling about the oral history of Sudbury. Louis is actually photographic created by a projector that shines on some sort of gauze screen or maybe it's even smoke. When the lights come on, this is all you see. But with the lights off, it's fascinating. Let me show you. Here's Louis here relating his stories. He looks like a real person, and the stories are interesting. Of course, we had to do the underground tour. 
taking a grass controlled elevator. We don't actually go down very far, only a few meters I believe. On the way down we pass this view of the earth with stars in the background. Here's the uh, tunnel we're about to explore. Unlike uh, many uh, tunnels, this one is heavily protected with mist to prevent rock falls. We have an enthusiastic group of tourists, and there's Janina. We're off down the tunnel. Along the way are many displays of mining equipment and mining techniques. This is an imitation box of dynamite from the early days. We get instructions on how the holes were drilled and the dynamite was placed in and wired. I could spend a lot of time looking at all the exhibits. This machine pulls us to pull in the ore. We go into a safety area, which is sealed off in case of an accident. Christina's husband, George, who comes from Chile, listens intently. Now, just a quick look around the real mine. This is the Creighton mine, started in 1900, the original nickel mine. An early postcard on our tour through the nickel mine. Another postcard demonstrating scaling, knocking off loose pieces of rock. Modern machinery in the Creighton mine. We finished with the uh, Inco mine. Now Janina is taking us to Ramsey Lake. We look at a plaque on Austin Airways. Ramsey Lake is very popular with the locals and tourists. They even have a glass bottom boat and there's lots of yachts. There's a very large display on Ramsey Lake run by Science North. We didn't actually get into that. Here's the Science North display building really quite substantial. However, we did go to the restaurant located on the top floor of this building. It's really quite cold, probably not over 10 degrees for a June day in Sudbury. Fortunately for me, there's a wooden rampway right around a portion of the lake. We go for a long walk, then return for coffee and meals at Landing's Restaurant. The restaurant is based on the theme of beavers and otters opening up the Canadian North. They have a lovely wood plaque symbolizing the development of Sudbury. First of all, the fur trade with the canoe the construction of the Canadian Pacific Railway, beginning of farming, and not last, the mining, with the chimney and the smokestack. We admire the view through plate glass windows inside the warmth of the restaurant. Thanks for joining me, dear viewer, on this quick visit to Sudbury, Northern Ontario. I do appreciate your company and wish you a pleasant day.